my parents got me this the Genesis first, and then they bought the NES. And I don't think they even knew the Super NES existed at the time. So like, I'm like playing Sonic first, and then we go back to like Super Mario Brothers two and three and one and Tetris and Tetris two and a bunch of other games. To be Fire fair, Billy. Tetris. Tetris never felt like it's not really a Nintendo game. Yeah, but what? Nintendo was like the only console that had it at the time. What? What the fuck? Do you say Bayou Billy? What? Bayou what? Billy. Yeah, Bayou Bayou Billy. Oh, I never even heard of that. <laughs> it's so, so bad. So get this right. It's, it's a, so terrible. It's a it's a it's a it's a beat 'em up for the for the Nintendo NES. Just you know, left to right. But if you have the fucking zapper, you can fucking do like the same game, but, but with can't. the but you can no, like you shoot can't. him. Yeah, you can shut the fuck with up. With the zapper, oh, you can, with the zapper, you can play the with the zapper. Up, Jeff, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> I fucking hate you right now. Are you serious? No, All this time, you could have done that. You could have just fucking used the gun. Yes, in Bio. That sounds like some made up fucking Luigi's and Mario 64 original bullshit. If you look hard enough. No, 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 no. The thing back then was fucking Yoshi's and Mario 64. No, that, that wasn't the, that wasn't a made up rumor though. I know it wasn't a made up thing, but it was like the it was like the thing back then, and people were trying so hard to find where the fuck Yoshi was, and you had to do some glitchy shit just to get to him. I remember my friend was like, "Yo, Luigi's in this game, man. You gotta go to the booze place. You gotta hit the third boot of the left, I remember go that. all the yeah. way to the fountain, and drain the water, and then Bro, the big bird will show." That's like that shit from back in the day when Pokemon first came out and people were like, yo, you can catch Mew. And I was just like, you're fucking lying. Could he get the lock? I was like, you're lying. Mew you, yeah, is you in catch, the game. You can, but... you can catch Mew. You, you go into the truck. And I was just like, you're fucking lying. Get yeah. out of here. Actually, that was a glitch. You could because, catch uh, Mew back in the day because they didn't properly code it. And the only way to get was, Mew was actually through a link cable. So it was Well, it was through events. That yeah, to, yeah, which was a link cable, which was link cable to your fucking Game Boy. Yeah, to your to your Game Boy, and they give so, they just send you the. Fuck. But if you fuck with but, the certain settings in the game, it will change the coding and let you battle Mew. You're not really allowed to, and you could just kill it. Yeah, <laughs> that's depressing. So you guys ready to start this? Yeah, whatever. I'm still looking at stuff. Man, now I'm still how, how, fucking... how, how big is your list right now, Jeremy? Do you want to know? Like, just... I just want. I don't want to. I want a number. Like, just give me a number. Um, ten. Shut the fuck up. We're ready to go. Hey guys, this is Matt Turbo Select DX, along with Jeremy and JoJo Jeff. Mm. We're back. Mm. <laughs> JoJo Jeff. Don't call me that. Jeremy anyway, wait, no, it's been a while. Where, where did JoJo Jeff come from? Is I said it yesterday. Remember? He said it. Yesterday. I, I don't remember. Anyway, it's been a while since we've done this. Yeah. So it's been a hot minute. So before before we get into the topic of the day, Sonic Two is amazing. It is. You know what? Yeah, Podcast over. Click. No, it's good. <laughs> you, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Oh god. Anyway, before we get to the topic of the day, we uh, just like uh, any other gamer out there, you know, we all play games, and I just want to know what you guys been playing recently. So uh, I'm gonna start this off with uh, Jeremy, because I know Injustice 2 just came out recently, and you've been on that. Yeah. I have. How, how's that been so far? Give, give, give me the load. If you played the first Injustice, it's pretty pretty much same exact game uh it's enjoyable uh you lit- literally if you don't know what injustice is injustice is a is a fighting game comprised of dc comic book superheroes uh the well, just dc comic book characters in general and it's by the same people who make mortal Kombat. and it's a, it's a fun fucking game i enjoy it uh i've been mostly doing the story uh playing ranked i played a few ranked matches today actually that was pretty fun whooping people's asses uh I've been playing that. Been playing Guilty Gear Excerpt Rev 2, which just came out today. T- today, and I've been playing that today. Played Jeff in that actually. We were playing online not I that pick, long I ago. I picked it up earlier too. Yeah, yes, we were, and uh, the, the salt could be heard. Could yeah, be I was. But... I was getting a little salty, but overall, I prevailed. <laughs> Faust is great. Fuck Faust. Anyway, I played that Near Automata. Uh, Near Automata's fun. Still playing Street Fighter V. I don't ever stop playing that game. And Overwatch. Those are the two games that are like the constants. Uh, other than that, I've been I, I haven't really had the chance to play as much because I've been gone for the past month for reasons, army reasons. But that that's that's basically what I've been doing. What I've been playing. What about you, Jeff? Uh, it's quite a few games actually. Um, 
So recently I platinum Persona 5. That took me almost 200 something hours. I played that two weeks like straight. I couldn't play anything else. No, Loser. a month. A month straight. That's all Loser. I played. Uh, I've been also. I I went back to. Uh, did you before you continue? Did you uh, use any sort of guide or like anything when you did that, or you just kind of? Oh yeah, no, I did. Oh, okay. I was because uh, I always like to get all of the social link. Well, now confidence done in one playthrough. I don't like having it for the second run. That's just me, though. Is there a reason why they like, call them confidants, or is this just like a just another name? Each really? each game like does that, or no? They were called social links in P3 and P4. It just uh -huh. sounds cool, I guess. Okay. Persona 5 overall is just a cooler game. Because I keep hearing people say that, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> That's just a di it's just a different name for friend or whatever. Okay. Anyway, uh, so I platinum that. And then I, uh, I have, I've been going back to Ryuga Gotoku, uh, Yakuza, uh, Ishin. Uh, that game's difficult to play because it's all in Japanese. Good thing I have a bunch of guides and someone who translated it in a YouTube walkthrough. So yay for that. And I've also, uh, yeah, I was playing, uh, like Jeremy said, Rev 2 today. Fun stuff. I was playing, I was actually playing Guilty Gear a little bit before Rev 2 came out. And, oh, right, I finally made progress in Phoenix Wright Spirit of Justice again. I beat the third and fourth case after, like, several months of not playing it, so that that felt great. A nice little hiatus. Uh, it was a little too long, to be honest. I'm <laughs> on the last case. I gotta, I gotta, like, finish it so that way I don't touch my 3DS for another five years until the next one comes out. Let it collect all the dust until you get a Switch and then just start throwing Can't out the window. anything else I've been playing, uh... Uh, except Sonic Forces forces Mania to be canceled, but you can oh go my next. God, shut up. <laughs> so, so I've been playing a lot of Overwatch with Jeremy lately because uh, the new event, and I want to get the fucking hustle with Mercy, and then I'll be done. No, I'm just kidding, but still, all those dances are great. And uh, I mean, I've been playing this for a while. It's uh, actually like a few months back, but when I came back from the field, I picked up uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris. And I don't know if, like, they didn't market it on any other console or anything like that, but I picked it up for PS4 because it's my console of choice. And, like, no one's online in that damn game. And it's kind of depressing. And I kind of want to buy it for the Switch, but there's no guarantee that people are playing on the Switch either. I would imagine now, people are since it's, like, the newest console. And people, and I think Sega did more, had a little more of a, uh, put more effort into advertising it for the Switch because I didn't even know this thing was like, I had, and it's not digitally available on the PS4. I had to go to the store and buy it, but it's digitally available and physically available on the Switch, so that was kind of upsetting. What if it was Columns? No. <laughs> Col columns, is, columns is good and all, but like, it, it, it was literally just back in the day, just a, like an alternate Tetris to play on your, on your Sega console. <laughs> It's like all it ever was. If it was columns, everyone would be playing. I don't think so. I don't think so anymore. But it no, Puyo, I'm Puyo, Puyo Tetris is fun. Uh, it's it's kind of cute how like the people at, behind Puyo Puyo Sega, or unless there's another developer behind it as well, like gave the Tetris pieces personas or whatever, like like the fucking T dudes, like the captain of the ship and shit like that. It's cute. Did I them. tell you there's a Puyo Puyo game in Yakuza Six? It was that one. It's, uh, I think it's the Tetris one. Uh, it's one of the newer ones. They put it in the arcade games. I don't think... That can't, can't be the Tetris one. No way. I don't know. It's a more recent one, though. But they put it in Yakuza 6 along with Virtual Fighter 5. You could play in the arcades. Oh. Did it yeah. go online? No. No, of course. They got local play, though. But yeah, the the, the Tetris character... All the Tetris pieces, like the, the line, the, the T, the L, the J, and all of them, they got, uh... They got personified. So that's that's you know it's it's nice and cute. The story's stupid. It's like of course it's like oh, all these tetramonies are coming from the sky. We gotta destroy them. And this, and the fucking Captain T comes up. He's like this is how you Tetris pussies. And then he shows them. And then of course the player characters are like oh this is too easy. Yeah. Then he switch the other way around. And then the fucking Tetris characters like oh this is too easy. Like it's it's really dumb. It's a dumb story. But it 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 pretty much teaches you how to play the game and then play many of the different modes in it. I mean as a Tetris person I enjoy it and I'm learning more about Poyo Poyo or Poyo Pop. So it's fun. I also got Nira Automata, and I've been playing that slowly but surely. Uh, I got two of the endings. The fucking soundtrack is fucking amazing. Fell in love with it. it. Like I did download it actually. Fell in love with it like right away. It's great. It's fantastic. Definitely one of the best soundtracks of our generation. I was I was really not expecting it. Like because like 
I mean, I, I liked what I heard in the demo, but like, whew. Well, the first Nier had a really good soundtrack, so. Yeah. That, that and Drakengard, I guess? Yeah. Song of the Ancients. Uh, yeah. Drakengard, sort of? Uh, it depends which, well, which Song of the Ancients? There's like fucking five different versions. In the first one, I I'll like go with the, the Nier version. I like the Automata version a lot. Yeah, the the Atonement. Atone, Atonement, that yeah. shit's fucking fire. But it's, it's really, the soundtrack's good, like, if any, like, I'm, I'm interested in the story, but, like, the soundtrack really kept me going. I was just like, man, this is, I can't wait to find the next area and hear what it, what's going Actually, now that I think about it, when I think about the soundtrack, not just Song of the Ancients, but, uh, I think it's, uh, City of Light or whatever, it's just basically the, the overworld theme of when you're in the city. Yeah. Uh, I love that, I love that one so much. It's so good. And, the I like the one song, too, where you, uh... The, when I, uh, the, the amusement park is a pretty good song. Yeah, the amusement park one's good too. Especially yeah. when like you get deeper into it and like the music gets more and more dynamic. Mm. And then you hit a certain spot in the park where like the lyrics kick in. Yeah. It's almost as if Near Automata is really good and it's not flavor of the month. Alright, definitely. Go play it. Not. Go buy it. Go support it. It's a great game. Go buy yeah. Puyo, Puyo and go Tetris. Play, go, go buy the first Near while you're at it too. Go get Puyo Puyo Tetris for PS4. Jump online so Matt has someone to play with. <laughs> you know, it's almost as if this ties into what we're going to be talking about today. Anyway. anyway, guys, yeah, we're going to jump into our next topic, our main topic of today's discussion. And that's uh, older games that weren't so popular and why old. you should play them. They don't, have to, they don't have to be old, old, but it's just, it's just they're, they're less popular games than most consumers want to think about picking up, looking at, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, I, not adventure for the Atari. Sure. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that oh, is. Oh man, either. Adventure was the first open world adventure game on. Oh, on Atari. okay, yeah, so, I know what you're talking about. The first Easter egg ever. I uh, think fucking I think Robot Chicken made a fucking skit about that actually. Yeah, it was the first game to ever have an Easter egg, and that Easter egg was the developer credits. Oh boy. Because companies back then would not let developers put their names in the games. Oh boy. Oh yeah, I remember that actually. Yeah. That's why Japanese people use nicknames. Yep, I do. So, so before we get into this, we're gonna go in a particular order because uh, apparently Jeremy has a lot of games he wants to. He just has so many up. coming out of his ass. So we're gonna we're gonna I start can, off. I can, I can cut some of them. Well, you can you can talk about them. Just uh, we're gonna start off with uh, we got plenty of time. If it's Ghoul Patrol, don't bother. If it's the bouncer even... for PS2. Mm. Dude, I don't know why people talk about that. I never played that game. <laughs> 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 I hear people talk about that fucking game all the time. I'm just like, fucking I never played it. What game? Fuck that guy. The Bouncer. Oh, the Bouncer. bouncer. Fuck you, that piece you mean, of uh, Sora 1.0? <laughs> you know, yeah, the game you meant you brought up. Bad. I hate the Bouncer. The Bouncer. With the, with the red-haired chick who looks like Knuckles named Echidna. Mmm. Sexy. Uh, really? That's her name? Yeah, her name's Echidna. Anyway, so yeah. we're gonna start this. We're gonna start this list off with Jeff, and he's, uh... So bad. So, go ahead, Jeff. What, uh, what less popular... <laughs> and or older games would you recommend to our viewers? I've been saying it for years and I probably got really annoying with the soundtrack stuff, but Legend of Lagaya has always been one of my top RPGs ever in existence. Did, did you guys, you didn't, I think I've asked you if you played it, I don't remember. I, your I, played, I, played, I never played, I played it. Legend. I played Legend of Lagaya. I, I'm, I'm, pretty I, sure I, I'm pretty sure I tuned in like every other night you were streaming it back then. I, did, I didn't get that far. I literally got to like a certain How long ago I, was it? Dude, this was back when I was like ten. I had a PS One. Okay. And I had, I had, was, I think I was gifted. Someone gave it to me. Someone gave me Legend of the Gaia, and I didn't know what the fuck it was. I played it. It was pretty cool. The story, it was interesting to me, and the characters I thought were interesting. But I got stuck um, <laughs> at a boss. I can't remember what boss. Probably what, maybe it might have been the first one, the first major boss. No, it wasn't because I fought. I already fought a few bosses in that game, but I got stuck. And Maybe it was a giant like, crab monster. I, dude, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Anyway, but, so Legend yeah. of Gaia, the reason I put on my top, my top, like, list of RPGs, because I played a lot of RPGs, is because of the. A lot of it has to do with the battle mechanic, because you can pick your own combos, right? There's preset combos you can have the characters do, which are the most effective. But you can, you'd press up, down, left, or right, and then the characters would do left, up, down, right, right? And yeah, like Jeremy said, the story was interesting, the characters were interesting, like you cared about the plot and the things going on. And what was really cool, and it wasn't a thing really back then, was that when you actually equipped a piece of armor and weapon to someone, it changed in battle. Which was 
like mind blowing to me. I think it was 90, uh, the game came out in I think 97, I wanna say. 97 or 98. Uh, Final Fantasy overshadowed it. You know, like every other RPG at the time, Final Fantasy was like, no, you ain't, where are you going? You, you're trying to get to the limelight? I wouldn't be surprised if it came out in the fucking magical year of 1998 where everything great came out. Final Fantasy, like Final Fantasy, like that's what overshadowed every RPG ever. Anyway, so yeah, it was just a good setting, good times. It, it's a fairly challenging game, too. Like even now when I go back to it, even though I know everything, like it's still pretty challenging. And Matt, what you saw, it looked like a nice PlayStation 1 game, right? Yeah, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty decent. It has a really good soundtrack. I've always, I've always admired that. That was my favorite part about it. So yeah, that's that. Uh, another one I said was Katamari, and you guys have played Katamari, right? Katamari, Damashi. Yeah. Obviously. A lot, a lot of people play Katamari, uh, but like Katam it's one of those games where I just felt really happy playing it for some reason. Don't know why. I just really love... It's very pleasant and pleasing, except when... And simple. Some, But sometimes it gets very... You get very nervous about the time. You're like, I gotta, get, I gotta do this or my dad's gonna kill me, I literally. I gotta do this. I gotta get uh, Katamari is another game with a really good. Well, any of the games we probably talk about have really good soundtracks. Uh, Katamari is very simplistic graphic-wise, but that's part of the reason why I like it because of the style. It wasn't really a big game when it came out either, because I found it in like a bargain bin at Best Buy, which is weird. I found Phoenix right in a bargain bin too. Huh. So yeah, I found the uh, Katamari in a bargain bin. I really loved it and just. To this day, I still play all the games that come out. But I didn't really play uh, Beautiful Katamari. That was on the 360. So I kind of missed out on that. And I didn't play me and my Katamari, but I don't want to play on the PSP because it requires two sticks. And that's, that's just fucking stupid. Hell. And what was the third game I said? Yakuza. Oh, yeah. We had a whole podcast on that, but Yakuza's awesome. Play that. They are good games. I, like I, I mean, I don't... Uh, Damn, I, don't say that, you'll get him mad. What I will say is that Yakuza was like Sega's... Like, I've been actually watching a video series about the uh, about the games, right? And initially, Sega actually denied it. Uh, Nagoshi, the guy who created the series, they were like, no. Nope, they flat out denied it because they were like, this is stupid. We only... Kid, games are for kids mentality at the time. And like, they were like, this is too much. This is... Are you crazy? We can't. And another thing they got really nervous about was associating with the Yakuza at all. They're like, who's gonna, who's gonna buy this Nagoshi? Who? Mm -hmm. And funny enough, the game costs like two or three million dollars to make, right? Like overall, and that was with I think advertisement and stuff. But at one point, Nagoshi actually went to his bosses and was like, I need more money. <laughs> and they're like, this is a new IP, and you are asking us for more budget. More, more. Like, are you fucking crazy? But Sega took a chance, and Ed, Yakuza is like one of their biggest franchises to date right now. Yeah. It's literally, the, it's like, it's their money maker in Japan. It's a, a Yakuza. If I could say, if it's anything close in Japan, if I could say it's anything like mainstream, you know, like how Call of Duty is mainstream for us, Yakuza is like their mainstream game. Like that's how gigantic it is. Which is really fun, but if I could describe it gameplay-wise, uh, yeah, I guess a bit like Shenmue, but it's also like, um, what's another 3D fucking brawler Cap, uh, Capcom Sega made, uh, I forgot, I had the name in my head, but it's like another, it, it, it's a 3D brawler, uh, essentially with combos, so. Mm -hmm. And also Kazuma Kiryu is like the greatest man on the planet. Oh, yeah. and if I could say one other thing about it, is that uh, Makoto from Persona 5 is a big fangirl for Kiryu. Is she really? No. Uh, oh. Well, in the game, in Persona 5, she's like, hey, come see a movie called Like a Dragon. Which mm -hmm. which is what Ryu Ga Gotoku translates out to. Okay. So now there's a running gag with fans. Is just uh, She's a big uh, Kiryu fangirl, and I love it. Mm, it's the best. Sense. It's the big. It's just. It's hilarious. I just like the idea. She's like, "Oh my god, this guy took his shirt off. Oh my god, look at his tattoo. Oh, his back. Oh, he's so. He's just a Japanese man for me." Someone walks by and slips on a puddle. Whoa. 
<laughs> She's just like, oh my god, did he, did he just take, did, did he just take a bicycle and ride it off a dude in his heat move? Oh, that's so hot. You got any, uh, you got any little uh, honorable mentions? Any, anything uh, that might have popped, popped to your head? I mean, that's like obscure off the top of my head. Not really. Oh, Comic Zone. Yeah. Mm. Yo, Comic Zone's great. More people should play it. Comic Zone. We were talking about this stuff. Comic Zone, Vector Man. What was you know, uh, what was know, the main character's name in Comic Zone? Sketch Turner. Uh, Sketch Turner. It, it's kind of like yeah. uh, reminds me hey, of Tracy for with Pokemon. his uh with his main villain uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt mixed with Colonel Sanders. <laughs> yeah. It's really weird. Now that I'm living in the real world, things are going to get crazy, baby. Let's go. And I know you said Golden Axe is a little, like, I don't know. In this day and age, I don't actually think people remember. A lot of people are going to be like, yeah, Golden Axe necessarily. So. Well, see, I think, like, with games like Golden Axe, Comic Zone, even, like, Streets of Rage, it needs, like, it needs, like, like, even games like F-Zero and stuff, like, because they're... Like they're competing with like their main IPs like Sonic, Mario Kart, and stuff like that. They need to this like make the games like have this like the same formula, but like give them like the Sonic Mania treatment where like the sprites are the sprites are cleaned up and like more fluent. And people this, like, always forget that about Sega, right? Like Sega's got some of the most like crazy awesome IPs ever. Yeah, they, they just needed to like clean up the sprites, you know, remix some music, you know, have have a few throwbacks in the levels and shit, and it's like make it like a twenty dollar game that you can buy like on like the eShop or the P the PlayStation Store and like bring them back that way like they don't have to have like a they're not going to be a triple A title when you like they're not going to be like oh golden axe blah 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 unless like you make it like badass as hell like you can people will buy it if it's like a $20 like quick pick me up game that looks oh, before, cleaner than it did before I end my thing uh, one more recommend one more honorable mention goes to Rise Star yeah just before oh, yeah. Matt could say it ever I wasn't like honestly I wasn't the biggest fan of Rise Star. Like it was a it's good a, game, but I didn't like it was it was different. Yeah, I didn't like go crazy over it. I was just like uh, I've never I seen my I, I could have said Toe Jam and Earl, I guess, but I don't like the first one all that much. I remember seeing my uh my neighbor play and I was just like, What is this? Like what am I looking at? And I tried it and I was like, it's a little slow, but like you know So kind of who wants to go next? I'm I'm gonna go next since Jeremy has uh semi big list. Okay. And uh so my first game you know, every, the Legend of Zelda fucking franchise is obviously popular, but not many people play Four Swords Adventures on the GameCube. And that's because it was a fucking hassle to put together because you needed four Game Boy Advances, four friends, <laughs> and link friend, cables. And then those link cables. Well, three friends, technically, plus yourself. So four people all together. But man, this game, like, when we played it, it is so much fun. Like, just now, having a, like, Link to the Past kind of, like, style game with four fucking links running around pretty damn fun i played yeah, it those twice. were fun those were fun times i played it twice i didn't own it a friend of mine did it at the time we i played it over his house we didn't play like all four players but what we did play was actually on link to the past the game before the main four swords adventure we uh we played that a lot the mini adventure or whatever the fuck it is on link to the past the one for the game boy Advance? The Game Boy Advance. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. Like, but the the thing about the the thing I well, said about it the was short, four... sweet. There was nothing you could really fuck up with that, you know. The four swords attached to that yeah. one though was like, uh, it wasn't really. You didn't really need four people. You just needed two people. Like... Yeah, it did. Yeah, they they um, because like in order to get that was even more of a hassle to be honest. You needed that four way splitter killing cable. Yeah. Like, fuck that shit, man. But uh, you didn't need four people. You could just uh. You can do you can do every puzzle in that game with two people, but with Force Wars Adventures, if you didn't have four people, like someone had to control two, or uh, like if you play two people, if you had two people playing, each person would control the other link, which wasn't that bad, but it wasn't the same. But like you would have oh, yeah. to like you would have to run around and figure out puzzles with all four of you. I remember uh, this one time, it was like we me. We played it in your house. It was yeah we did actually yeah we did. Oh yeah we, we did, did play that we really did. We streamed it. Holy shit! Oh god, we all got mad about that. But uh, I remember one time it was like me, Jeremy, Fred, and I think our friend Casey, or maybe Jamal at the time. And we were we were in this one village and we didn't know what the fuck to do. So we all grabbed the shovels and we started digging everywhere, like because we thought we were missing something. And we were there for a good hour, and then it turned out like we had to go in one of the houses and like use the fucking Pegasus boots to jump over. And it was like it was so simple, but like, at the same time it was just like doing that, playing that game was just so much fun. And it really was. 
it was just like the only thing that sucked about it my my one main gripe about it is that like if there was a connectivity issue with like the Game Boy Advance and the cable it just shot you back to the main menu so whatever progress you made in that map was fucking gone and I fucking hated that but it was a really it was it was too fun the game was like way too fun uh, my second choice it's another four player game and that's uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles again for the GameCube and that again, game's way harder without four people. And again, yeah, yeah, like not many people played it because the the issue with the Game Boy Advances and the link cables. But once you get, you can you can play that with two people, three people, or four people. That but, is just with two people. I think it's almost it's it. When I was younger, it felt impossible. Yeah, it's just like what what you do in this game is that you collect the fucking what was it like uh. You collected it was, uh, that, that liquid, liquid for the chalice. Yeah, so you, you could like not from the die. crystals. You collected the liquid from the crystals in the chalice, but someone had to carry the chalice around to keep like the miasma away from you because the miasma will slowly kill you. So one person's constantly manning a chalice as the other people are running around killing enemies, collecting magic because the enemies will drop magic like cure, fire, blah blah blah. And you can mix if you cast if you're con if you're uh, in the process of casting magic and you, you combine you, like your circles together, you can cast like Faraga or uh, or a fucking Kiraga and shit like that. It was it was really cool. And like what we played when it was like me, Jeremy, Fred, and uh, I think it was Jamal. It might have been Casey, but I think it was our old friend Casey. But it was Jamal, I think. Uh, we would like have like everyone designate. We'll have like someone designate to like uh, to like strength or we had, magic. We had, we we had, had a healer. Like, we was, had like someone who would do healing. Someone who would like. We all had our own like individual job. magic, so yeah. we can combine to do because I was, shit. if I remember correctly, like I was usually the healer, and I'll have like I'll have like life magic or the heal magic. And what you would do is that you go around to each dungeon, figure it out. I don't, they weren't randomly generated, for, as far as I remember. But each each dungeon had like its own story with the boss in it. And when you defeat four, when you do four dungeons, that counts as a year. And I think we beat ours in like year like twelve or fourteen. I forget. But like the the map is huge. Like the map is huge. Like the overall the overworld map. And it plays like in a kind of like over camera over the head, like isometric it kind plays. of view. It plays just as slow as a Monopoly game, but it's it's just like every, every and there was like four different uh, there was four different races. There was the uh, Selkies, the Clivats, which were like the normal humans. Yes, the, the Selkies were like beast people almost, but they look like humans, but they had like furry like. Were they like bird like people? The bird people were the Yelks or Yolks or some shit like that, and then the Telet I call them yeah. the Teletubbies, but they're by called, the like, way, the... that was something I really appreciated about that game. It wasn't something a lot of. RPG big you know big console RPGs were doing was that you would pick your character you would pick your class which actually did matter surprisingly but the other thing was that you actually had a family and yeah. like you, and you, you could were choose your job different yeah yeah right you could that was, and cool. that was neat because like for I really example I think I think my family was, my family was blacksmith so if you were to go back into the main town the main hub area and you I was in the area Obviously, I'll be playing. I'll, if I wasn't playing a game that day for some reason, if I wasn't there and like Fred and J and Fred and uh, Jeremy were playing their characters, they can talk to my parents and get blacksmith work done. But if I was playing a game at that time and my character was on screen, they will get a discount because I was there. And the same thing for like because there was alchemists and everything, so you can get like blacksmith work done, upgrade your weapons. You can go to the alchemist and get like magic and shit, whatever it was. And like you will always get a discount if that character was happened to be on screen at that time. Which was really cool. Like, I'm, I'm actually happy Jeff brought that up because I totally forgot about that. Yeah, no, it was just a we. It was just such this like little detail that they added in that you have like this family and it matters, you know. Like you, you weren't ha you didn't have too much of a personal like connection with them, but the fact that they're there and they can offer you stuff and like there, there was a little more meaning behind what you're doing than just hey, this yeah. village needs to not die. And the thing about the choosing a job too was that like if you're a first time player of the game. Which I kind of ruined it for anyone who would try it after listening to this, and even though it's not many people. But like, they didn't really tell you why. Like, you were choosing like like a list just pops up on your Game Boy Advance. You're like, well, I guess I'll be a blacksmith or some shit like that. You have no idea what kind of bearing it has on the story or like gameplay in general. And like, I don't know. There's so much. That game has so much replayability, in my opinion. Like, it took us forever to beat the game. I think it took us like a like maybe like a year and a half to beat it. That's because we only played it every weekend when we saw each other, or every other weekend. But it was it was. It was just one of those games, and if you uh, disconnected your Game Boy Advance by accident for any reason, your character just froze on screen, and you just plug it back in and restart. So you didn't have to go back to the main menu like in fucking Four Swords Adventure. Anyway, I, I really love that game. I think I might replay it with Tammy for the channel, and uh, 
post it up when, once we start getting once we start recording again. Uh, but my last game I want to pick, and this this one's for me. I really like it. Jeremy and Jeff are probably be like meh, but it was Boktai for the Game Boy. Advance. I look. I always fuck around with that. Okay, but Boktai is pretty fun. Unfortunately, the only one I've actually played when I borrowed it from you was Lunar mm-hmm. Nights. So that was one of that the better ones. You you started off with a with a good one. To be fair, that voice acting is horrible. No, no. Well, Lunar Nights was a good game. So Lunar Nights was fun. It just it really. I, I really like the the chocolate melting onto the banana, unless that was a thing in other games. You no, know, it was. It was a it was a thing in the first instance. But really, it, uh, it only uh, happened it only happened when you're actually outside in the sun, though. Like that's the only time it will occur. Oh, but in lunar nights, it just happens. Yeah, it just happens because like, so what? Ha- so Baktai is a isometric point of view game, over the head, whatever. And you're this kid named Django who has in the first one you have this weapon called the Gundel Soul, which harnesses the power of the sun, and you shoot pretty much sun rays at pe- at demons, undead mummies, vampires, stuff like that. You're practically a vampire hunter, but there's other demons and shit in the game. And pretty much the cartridge on the Game Boy Advance had it protrude it protruded out a little bit and it had like a little black square which was a fucking infrared reader or whatever. So you actually go out in the sun. A sensor. A sensor, yeah. You go out in the sun and it'll actually like there's a meter in the game and depending how strong the sun is that day depends how much sunlight you get in the game. And I thought that that was mind blowing for me. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And the only reason why I found out about this game is because uh, we were me, Jeremy, and well, Jeremy played it before we did. But me and Fred were really getting in, were getting into uh, Mega Man Bound Network, and we started with four. And Mega Man Bound Network four had cards from this game, from the Baktai game, and it even had like a side, like not a side quest, but it had like a quest in the game related to Baktai. And I'm like, what the hell is this game they're talking about? Blah blah blah. And, you know, we did a little more research when we could because the internet was scarce for us that, these days. And I was like, oh, this is a whole nother game. And in Mega Man Battle Over 5, you can do, like, the crossover battle and stuff. So that piqued my interest in Boktai. So I bought the game when I was in Florida one year. I actually started with Boktai 2, which was weird. But I believe Mega Man Battle Over, Battle Over 4 was referencing Boktai 2. So I picked it up, and it was always sunny in Florida. So I always had, like, full meters and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And in Boktai 2, you get your Gundel Soul taken away from you from your uh, from another character. I'm not going to spoil it for who it is, just in case anyone's interested in playing. And uh, but this character is significant in the story. So you get this uh, this gauntlet on your arm that gives you that lets you harness the power of the sun into any weapon you choose. So you have a hammer, a spear, a sword, and you do get the Gundel Soul back sooner or later, but not at the, not like towards the end of the game. And pretty much what you do is that you hunt these demons, the vampires, whatever, and then you have a boss fight after the dungeon. And you can sneak around the dungeons like by going against the wall like Metal Gear Solid style. It is made by Konami and Hideo, Hideo Kojima, so he made... It was pretty much like Metal Gear with vampires. And you can sneak around enemies, but if they hear you, they'll attack you and stuff like that. But when you defeated a boss, you put them in a coffin, and then you had to purify them. So you had to drag the coffin to this thing called the, uh, the Sun Pile Driver. I think it was called, yeah, the Pile Driver. And but the pile drive didn't work unless the sun was out. So if if it's like nine o'clock at night and you just beat this boss, you literally had to wait to the next day to purify this thing by saving the game and you know forgetting about it or doing something else in the game unless you had like a black light in your house because that would pick up infrared. And then uh, but the cool thing too is that you'll save your game, turn it off, come back to it the next day, and the monster in the coffin will like be like he'll be like pushing the coffin away from the pile driver and you have to pull him back. And then you have to purify them, and I just thought that was a cool thing. And it had like a little bit of voice acting and stuff. So like when you cl- when you collect the power from the sun, fucking Django over screen Tayo and stuff. It was cool. Unfortunately, did the you? Third- <laughs> did you bring? Sorry, I had to walk away for a sec. Did you bring up the fact the only reason that game exists is Kojima was like Japanese kids need to get out more? Oh no, I, I didn't know why. Like. I just remember the commercials like these two dudes are like playing tennis inside, and it was like not that, every game is meant to be played inside or some shit like that. And then it shows I remember the the Japanese commercial for those two kids. Oh, like the had a like the little like te- not the teaser. What do they call that? It was like a trailer, and it was like it was a two- showcase for yeah. the game. But explain it, it didn't show gameplay. I think it just showed you had to get outside mm-hmm. to play this. And it was like, like and unfortunately, it didn't sell that well. I'm, I'm guessing it's. It didn't sell that well in the States, so the third one no, didn't come here. No, but for I'm, sure did not. But I'm not sure if it sold that well in Japan either, because they, well, they made three of them. So. They tried one more with Lunar Knights, and that was for the DS. And obviously, with the DS cartridge, they weren't going to stick that thing out to have a sensor in it. But So it had like in game weather. But if you had Baktai, 
you can attach it to the Game Boy Advance slot in the bottom, go outside and get a get a reading of the sun, and then you will keep that reading all day. But, uh, but, but being able to change the weather like that kind of broke it, too. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, I don't know if that game didn't sell well or anything, but and the fact that Kojima's not with Konami anymore, but nothing else ever came of that. The game was relatively short, too. It was like a 10-hour game. And... Uh, I mean, was it I, Newgrounds cartoon? Back to Boktai, the game no one ever no, played. No, the game no one ever played. <laughs> Sabada, Sabada. <laughs> I kind of, sort of, kind of have a thing for your evil twin brother. So yeah, Django has a twin brother who uses the power of darkness, and it was... It's just so cool, like, just play the game. The In the second one, I had the crossover battle in Mega Man Battle Network 5, so you can fight Shade Man in Mega Man Battle... in uh, Boktai as a... Uh, as they fought the in Mega Man Battle Five, you fight the one of the vampire villains in Baktai, and in Baktai you fight Shade Man. And it was just, it was just really cool. It's just like everything they were doing with Baktai and Mega Man at the time was really cool. And then Lunar Knight, that shit was weird though because when you did it over the, like the fucking link cable yeah. or whatever, no, it was a wireless. When, like because because Battle Network has turns, you had to stop. It had to stop and wait for like Mega Man to take his turn and do whatever he had to do. Well, what, what, what happened? No, what happened is that uh, you fight at the same time, but since you can do more in the Baktai world, like you can obviously do more damage easier because you you can move freely around like a quote unquote three D isometric space. The, your turn in Baktai ended faster than yeah. the Mega Man turn, so you will have to wait a little bit longer. But depending how like you counter the enemy on Baktai affects how like Mega Man gets damaged on his side and vice versa. So if you get like a program advance or like you counter the uh because in Mega Man if you like what if you use like a chip and you counter someone like that does like more damage and it, it affects uh Baktai a little bit more. It was just really cool. And then like Lunar Knights just try to hide the fact altogether that it was a Baktai game. They called it Lunar Knights. They, they changed the characters' names to from Jangle to Arin and from Sabata to fucking Lucian. Everyone had a different, but even like, but I mean, it was obviously that it was a Batai game. If you were a Batai fan, it was obvious I'll, because too, when you go into options and stuff, it has like Batai music in it and stuff like that. But they tried to but hide the fact that it was a Batai. Wasn't game. wasn't that just a localization thing? Because in in Japan, wasn't they weren't the characters still known as Jago and Sabata? No, they no they were. I'm saying in, in, I was saying like what I was saying was purely like in the United States, they were trying to hide the yeah. fact that it was a Batai game. But yeah, it was called it was called Bakuro, Bakuro no Tayo in fucking. Japan, Bakuro no Taiyo DS, which in the DS stood for Django and Sabata. So, that was convenient. But, yeah, yeah. here they changed everything. But what it was a cool. thing. But it was cool because, like, Django, you can switch freely between Django and, and Sabata in Lunar Knights or Orin and Lucian. And Django used guns and Lucian used different blade weapons. And it was it was a really cool. It was, it was a, roughly never, the same game, but they changed it up. I'll never forget the first time I heard Orin say awesome. And the oh, way the voice... Because awesome. the voice actor did not... didn't... Well, to be Why fair, to be fair, like didn't properly say it. To be fair, when those games were coming out for DS, like even like Mega Man ZX, like had like bad voice acting. But like it was just like it was a weird time, I guess, because they were awesome. like, awesome, because they were like, hey guys, let's let's make this game for DS, cool. Oh, and let's give them full full voice acting. But like, okay, like remember that remember that hooker you saw down the street the other day? Yeah, I liked her voice. Bring her back in. Like it was kind of like that and. But yeah, I mean, it was it was a tricky time, but those are the three games I recommend, and I'm sorry I went off on a little tangent, but I'm very passionate about these games. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Those things, that's what I like to hear. More I'm like Dead Knights. And, and now, the moment y'all been waiting for, Jeremy's turn. You're hyping me up, like, it's not even that big of a deal. Yeah, you like, better have Ghoul Patrol. I don't remember every single, like, game I wanted to talk about, or every single detail, but a lot of them, like... Like, the ones that I'm really passionate about, um, I'm gonna start off with one that Street I... Street like, Fighter, the little unknown game, Street Fighter 2. Yeah. Shut the fuck up, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ow. one game that I, I really, like, it's, it was kind of weird, because when I played this game, I didn't own it, I rented it. And that time that I rented it, um, like, it was the best time ever. And there's a little game by the name of, uh, uh, Clone Noah on the PlayStation 1. Uh, which it originally came out on the PlayStation One. They they made a they had a remake of it. They came out on the Wii a few years back or several years back. I, I don't give a fuck about that. I heard it was good, but I, I didn't play that one. Uh, but yeah, I played the first Clonoa on the PlayStation One. And basically, it's a game. It's a little game about some weird animal-looking guy. I don't know what he is. I he's not like a cat any, dog thing. He's like a mixture of something. I know 
but that anyway, Noah has a Pac-Man symbol on his hat. Yes, he has a Pac-Man. It, it's a game by Namco, by the way, for anyone who didn't know. <laughs> so that's why he has Pac-Man on his hat. He has a little Pac-Man on his hat. Um, and he's it's a platformer, and it's a it's a it's a charming platformer because you play as this character who's who's titled like the fucking Dream Warrior or the Dream Savior. I forgot exactly what it is because he's 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 a it's it takes place in dr in a dream world, uh, in dreams. Uh, and basically the whole story, the whole gist of Klonoa is just like, you know, you're trying to save this dream world, not Kirby's dreamland, but just dream world, this sleep-like world, from the, whatever nemesis, I forgot his name, some, he looks like a fucking Knights in the Dreams villain, uh, I forgot his name, but either way, it, it's a charming game, it has a nice little soundtrack, the areas in the game, uh, the art, everything, it's fucking gorgeous, and beautiful, I love it, uh, I love the character Klonoa himself. He's a great little little character. Uh, Yahoo or Wahoo? He says Wahoo. I always like, like Wahoo. Like, he know. says Wah. He says Wahoo. That's like his catch his catchphrase. Even though he that's like the only thing he ever says. Actually, wait, no, that's a lie. There is there is voice acting in that game, but it's just fucking gibberish because they're just like oh, yeah. like that. The one they for the Wii that they remade actually had him like speaking. Yeah, it was. In, yeah. They were speaking in English. They just talked regular. I like, like it when so. you do the I like it when you do the whole gibberish thing like in uh I remember playing Rayman 2 for the 64 and like they kind of whispered they're like <laughs> <laughs> like I was like I kind of like yeah that. <laughs> yeah no it's it's charming because it adds it it's it gives life to this its own little world and that's what I really like about Klonoa it's like it, both in Klonoa 1 and 2 I never played any of the GBA Klonoas um I wanted to I should have gotten them when I had the chance if you didn't know, there were Game Boy Advance Klonoa games. I think there was like two or three. Yeah, I played one of them and that was pretty good. But um, Klonoa 1 and Klonoa 2, to me, like they, those games stand out a lot uh, because they just have a charming world. PlayStation, they just PlayStation have, 2. Yep, they have wonderful characters, just uh, great art, great design. And the visuals are always... It's just, it's just... The world comes to life, even though it's like... It's crazy because it's a video game and... It's a dream world within a video game, but yet it's it's just it's it's a nice adventure. Can I can I make a point real quick? Go ahead. So in Klonoa 2, I know you'd probably like. Did you notice that like in some of the art he looked kind of like Sonic, like the yeah, little no, posey thing and everything? That's because um, the art, uh, a lot of the design in Klonoa 2 was done by uh, some Sega artists, uh, Sonic artists, people who worked on Sonic. Um, mm -hmm. They get they got some of the artists to design. To design Klonoa, because if you looked at Klonoa in the art, he looks kind of like Sonic. His eyes are different. He looks just different in general. And that's because they they gave him more of a they he was designed by Sega artists in that for the, uh, Klonoa too. Because I remember it too, like he had the he he was doing like the same pose as Sonic too, where like he has his arms crossed and he's like pointing one. Whatever. Yeah. Like I would just remember yeah. that, and I was like, boy. Yeah, Boy. no, that, that's, be that's because they got Sega artists to work on, to do a lot of the art and design. You know, in Tales of Symphonia, the pink-haired chick gets a Klonoa outfit. Yeah, I remember that. that. Does, and it's yeah. fucking just... horrible. The stats are garbage. Prisea, she actually, gets a Klonoa actually, now outfit. now that I think about it, when you, like, when you beat a stage in Klonoa too, like, he does the pose, like... Or whatever, like he does. The yeah, he does. Pose, the, like, he does. He does those poses. As his like hair, like flat. You'll, you'll find this surprising, but a lot of people based a lot of thing mascots off Sonic. Yep. No, no, no. But well, like I said, it was it was Klonoa Two had people that were from Sega and worked on Sonic in it. They worked on Klonoa Two, so I mean that's that the influence was there. You could see it. But anyway, that's that's my little spiel on Klonoa. If you never played it on the PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2, hell, fucking even the Wii, the version that's on the Wii, give them a try. They're good games. They're good games. I highly sell recommend that well, them. Uh, the Wii one. No, that's well. No, of course, but all of them didn't sell that well. <laughs> that's why if you ever try and find a copy of Klonoa 2 on PlayStation 2, that game's so fucking hard to find. Like, it it, that game's yeah, it's expensive. When I found it at GameStop one time, it was like used it was like 60 bucks it was not it was not cheap Jesus. it's one of those games that you were not gonna find all that often and when i did find it i fucking held on to that shit i don't know what happened to my copy but oh never mind somewhere. it wasn't it wasn't when you won or beat the stage it was like when you chose a stage in overworld he popped the pose yeah but anyway that's that's my little clone of a ramp play that game uh another game that i know many people probably don't fucking know about 
uh, that I played, it was a Dreamcast title. Uh, it's a little, well, it was, one of them was a Dreamcast title. The other was, were PlayStation 1 titles. Um, and it's a Capcom game by the name, it has two titles. The well, first one was called Star Gladiator. There was Star Gladiator and Star Gladiator 2. And then the third game on the Dreamcast was called Plasma Sword. Uh, and it was starring a, it was starring a character by the name of Hayato, who some people will probably remember from, mostly know him from Marvel vs. Capcom 2. The guy with the fucking lightsaber that everyone would say, oh, he's got a fucking lightsaber. So oh, that weird was, 3D fighter. It wasn't it wasn't a lightsaber. It was a plasma blade. But anyway, um, yeah, it was a 3D fighter, a 3D fighter Capcom again, a Capcom 3D fighter. Back when Capcom was starting to make like those those crazy Tekkenish, uh, Soul Caliburish 3D fighters. Like rival schools, uh, and I think there was another one I can't remember, but it was they were interesting games, uh, interesting fighting games. I personally thought because it had a unique cast of characters, it has that Capcom touch, that Capcom flair, um, where every character was unique, well, sort of. In in Plasma Sword and Star Gladiator, you had specific characters, and like each character had I, I shit you not, they had an, another character that was like kind of a clone of them. So, for example, you had Hayato, and then you had Dark Hayato, who he was a he was a completely different character, and he had a completely different design, but he was this he played the same was as Hayato. With yes, actually, he had he had dark he had tan skin and blue hair, blue sh short blue hair, and an eye patch. Um, and an eye patch, yes. <laughs> I'm not even yeah, I'm serious. I'm not even fucking with you. But anyway, yeah, Dark Hayato. Um, they each character had like their own. And Star Gladiator in Plasma Sword, it's kind of crazy now that I think about it. I think back on it. The story is kind of similar to Star Wars, in a way. Where you have, like, this fucking empire that's trying to do some evil shit and trying to rule. And you got these people, you know, just like, oh, do this and do that and trying to stop them with the Plasma Sword, the Plasma Blade or whatever. Which is essentially, I guess, a lightsaber. So I guess, yeah, it was a lightsaber, technically. But it was interesting, you know. Um, it was a good fighting game. Uh, it probably wasn't the, the best fighting game there was out there. If I had to pick between Star Gladiator and fucking Rival Schools, I'd probably go with Rival Schools every time. Uh, not every time, but I'd probably pick Rival Schools over Star Gladiator, but there's a charm to Star Gladiator and Plasma Sword. And they're just, they're, they're fun on their own. Um, and if you ever wanted to see where the characters come from and experience the story, it's a pretty decent story. Um, Star Gladiator and Plasma Sword is where it's at. Take a always check them out. Uh, PlayStation on PlayStation One and uh, Dreamcast. And fun games, fun little, fun little romps. Especially those uh, on the Dreamcast, you can easily burn it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, another one. Uh, this is actually a game. Uh, it's another Dreamcast title. That uh, there's a lot of games on Dreamcast that I played that I swear not many people played. See and it was a title. No, not see. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. It's a title by the name of Evolution. Um, oh was, yeah, I know about ooh. that. There were there were two games, technically three, because they remade the first one for GameCube, uh, and it wasn't even really a remake. They just ported it, I guess. But anyway, um, Evolution One and Two. They're they're an RPG uh, where you just play as this. I think the I think the main character was named was Max. I don't remember. It's been a while. But anyway, it's essentially they're like it, it's a game. It's an RPG where you play as like a kid and I guess his fucking cool ass butler, who's actually really fucking cool. Um, and whoever else joins your party along the way. And you just, they're like some sort of, uh, I guess, uh, treasure treasure hunters, or they go through ruins and just discover shit, try and find things in, a, in, a, in like, I guess, uh, a world with a lot of old old civilization type shit and ruins that, it, that you know, they discover every so often. Uh, it's, I don't remember every detail about the story. I don't remember much about it other than, like, they come into contact. One of the party members that they come into contact, which is a, a main character, one of the main, the more main characters in that series, is a some girl, I guess, who has some tie to some ancient civilization and some powers that they, you know, that they discover and learn about throughout the course of the games. Uh, but it's it's your standard RPG, you know, turn-based RPG, uh, where you sit there and you, you battles are, uh, like I said, turn-based and. Uh, Characters have their own abilities, own attacks, and things like that. And they're unique because each character has, like, I guess, these. they have these unique weapons uh, that are, like, I guess, tied specific to that game. Like, the main character has this fucking robot arm that he uses to do all kinds of crazy shit. 
Um, and it's not like he has his own human arms, but he has a robot arm on his. It's like a backpack, sort of, where it, like the robot arm is just tied to the backpack, and he just he just, he just does some cool attacks and shit like that. Um, it's been a long time since I played Evolution, so like I said, I don't remember everything about it. But it's, made by Ubisoft. it's yeah, is it? Was it made by Ubisoft? I don't even remember that. But it's a good, it's a good, it's a good fucking RPG that I enjoyed back in the day. That I know for a fact not many people played. Um, not I've never many seen people. It around, I just never picked it up. It has good art too. I like the art for it. Um, but that's another, that's one another Dreamcast title that I really enjoyed. Oh, along with uh, I'm plugging this in as well. Jetsa Radio. I know people talk about it, but it's a game that didn't get that much attention back in the day. It gets attention now to when it's too late. But back in the day, the game, the title Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future, I never played Future though. Uh, those games, they didn't get the attention, but they were fantastic games with uh, a very memorable and great soundtrack of both Hideki Naganuma. Uh, of both original music from Hideki Naganuma and even uh, fucking licensed music that they managed to get from not just um, Japanese artists, but also from fucking international artists. Just a, you know, just just a quick plug, if any of you fuckers out there like Sonic Rush and its music, then you will fucking love Jesse Radio. Same composer. Yep. What and if not they just, hate it? And not just that, but there was a Kickstarter not that long ago for a game called Hover, uh, Revolt of Gamers, I think it was called. Yeah. Uh, uh, which which they managed to get Hideki Naganuma to do the soundtrack for that game, whenever that game officially gets done and comes out. But I've, they already released one track. Uh, he released one track for people to listen to, and it's it's got that old Jet Set Radio flair, and it's fucking great. So check that out if you can. But yeah, Jet Set Radio um, it was a Dreamcast title originally. Then they pour, they had uh, Jet Set Radio Future on the Xbox, the first Xbox, the original Xbox. And they're just great games with a great soundtrack um, that didn't get the attention back in the day. They obviously, like I said, have the attention now. People sit here and say they remember it and rem remember it fondly, but no one fucking talked about it back in the day. But that's yep. besides. Hey man, oh. I talked about it sometimes along with my copy of Ready to Rumble Boxing. I bet so. You ain't fucking Ready to Rumble. That was another Dreamcast game that no one yeah, can another Dreamcast game Fuck you want to play? Grandia 2. Get on it. <laughs> that was also on the PlayStation. Yeah, but the PlayStation 2 version was disgusting. Uh, it was, it was horribly it was horribly ported. Colors were fucking fucked up. Music was fucked up. Was really, where shit. a lot of this podcast is going today is play more Sega games. And not just that, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to one last. Uh, and I'm gonna tie three games into this actually. Ooh. Uh, and it's, these are PlayStation Two games. Um, oh, the bouncer, the bouncer, and the bouncer. Shut the fuck up, <laughs> Blue Stinger. That was on the Dreamcast, motherfucker. <laughs> and no, not that. Anyway, um, one of them. You guys have heard me talk about. Jeff knows well that I talk about this game. A little mm -hmm. game, a game by the name of Rogue Galaxy. Um, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great another RPG, but this one's, it's not turn, it's sort of turn based, I guess. No, it's, 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 it's not. It's not. No, it's not. But it has, you have a meter, and you have, you are only allowed to do a certain amount of attacks within that amount of time, and then it, you wait, wait for the uh, the meter to refill, and then you can attack again. Sounds like uh, so, uh, Eternal Sunlight. It was almost. it was Level 5's last PS2 RPG. Yep, and it's uh, it's it's another one of those games. It, what's great about Rogue Galaxy is it's in the fucking title. Is you're you you play as a you, these group of characters that travel throughout their own perspective galaxy uh, to different worlds. I think there was like four different worlds, four or five different worlds. You it went doesn't matter. The game's fucking huge. Like yeah, it's a massive game with a lot of areas and, and it's hard. It gets hard. Like, it's not that hard. It gets hard. You just gotta fucking learn to. Yeah, because you always love versing the final boss. Now available I do, on the I... PS4. Anyway, yeah, you can, it, it is available on the PS4 for you to download. I would highly play. recommend it. By the way, and if I... anyone's looking for an RPG to play. Yep, it's a good game with it, a good story. Uh, the only thing I can that I can really complain about with the uh, with uh, Rogue Galaxy is uh, character development. The game has little to no character development in it, so like you'll sit there and like they'll sit they'll sit here and allude to two of the characters having some sort of romantic relationship, even though they never had anything in that throughout the entire game. But yeah, it, it, character development in that game is a little weird, but the story is pretty decent. Uh, environments are great. A lot of the worlds that you go to are fucking gorgeous looking, especially the, the ones, especially the one fucking uh, 
jungle world. I forgot what it's called. Um, and then the city world, the one, the one world where you go to that has that gigantic fucking city, where you fight, you you come into contact with your one party member that is like so disgruntled at his workplace that he's gonna destroy the entire workplace and kill everybody in it. You get to that part, Jeff? Did you get Car to that? Yeah, back in the day, I did. That was a yep. factory. You had to like verse a uh, Tetsu. You had to verse like a a robot out of like Gigantor or something. When I, when I got to that part, I was just like, this motherfucker is really this disgruntled that he's gonna kill and destroy this entire- Kick my ass Everybody and time. destroy everybody in this fucking facility. But yeah, it's a good game. Uh, also the weapons and the armor, and I love the costumes you can yeah, get. Yeah, all the- you can get different costume outfits. Um, the days before DLC. Yeah, there were, the game had a bunch of uh, wide variety of outfits, not just for the main character, but for all the characters. What about the bug tournaments, Jeremy? I don't remember that, and I don't think I ever did it, so that I could hate, fuck off. I hate your ball. Um, that's a not, different game. I know. But that's just one of the games I was trying to plug. The other one I was going to talk about real quick was, it's a well-known one, but I guarantee, but back in the day it wasn't um, played. It didn't get the attention it deserved because it only had three games. Actually, no, it had four, uh, but I don't count the DS version. The DS title was Beautiful Joe. Uh, Beautiful Joe uh, is a side scroller from Capcom, or particularly at the time, Clover oh, Studios, okay. now Platinum. Um, and you play as you know a character who's really obsessed with movies and shit like that. And Even when his girlfriend's gets, like, "Put your dick in me." Yeah, and he's just like, "No, but this movie though, Captain." No faggot! Blue, I'm trying to watch Captain Blue. What are you trying daddy? to watch? Captain Blue do some cool shit, and she's just like, "Whatever." It gets sucked into the Imagine the, the movie. imagine the plague of grapes drawing. No way, faggot! faggot. No yeah. way, faggot! Yeah, but she gets sucked into a his girlfriend gets sucked in the movie, and he's got to go save her, which he then gets the powers gifted to him from Captain Blue. Actually, and... uh, Jeremy, I want to ask you, what'd you think of that twist at the end? That was a twist. I did not see that coming. Well, no, I don't think anybody saw that coming. What'd you, what'd you think of that? I thought that because was cool. It's so weird because he's he's the one helping you in the beginning, giving you your powers, and then I, I, I just kind of spoiled it already. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. People All tuning right. in. The Spoiler. Girls. Anyway. The twist is Captain Blue is the fucking villain of the game. You've, and you get the verse in when he was young, and his theme when he was young, I don't know, I think it was a bit, re I, it might have been a bit remixed. I like it. Mm -hmm. so, oh, and not that Captain Blue is fucking Sylvia's fucking father. There's another twist. Yeah, no damn, guys, now people know and they'll never play. Beautiful fucking... Joe's definitely one of those games back then. You're right that really didn't even even when Capcom had it on the PlayStation Two and they're like Dante's in it, it really didn't. Oh, that no was so fucking it. cool because they changed up a lot of the battles too. Like when you fight Alistair as Dante, Alistair's just like, he's just like, bro, what are you doing? Get back over here so we can fight demons. And he's just like, no, I'm tired of you wearing me out and just not taking care of me. Also, Dante could fight cool. in his underwear. Yeah, when it's because like in Beautiful Joe, when you have VX, VFX powers, which is movie powers, and if you use up all your fucking VFX powers, you go back to reg you revert back to regular Joe, not Beautiful Joe. Uh, with Dante, when you use up all your VFX powers, you just go naked, and you don't have your outfit anymore, or your weapon. For me, it's really weird, because I had the first one on GameCube, and then my mom, for Christmas, got it for me on the PS2, mm -hmm. the second game. Oh. So, it's really weird. I played, and then the second, Beautiful Joe 2, which did, which allowed you, you not could play as fucking, what was it, Sexy, Sexy Sylvia? Sylvia. And she is pretty awesome. I liked playing as Sexy Sylvia. Like, I wasn't the biggest fan at that. first. Once you upgrade her a little, though, she becomes really good. Yeah, man. She had those pom poms, and I think she also had the guns too. And then, and then it led, then it led onto the fucking worst cliffhanger. Yeah. We're and never then, getting our third game. And then there was Red Hot Rumble. Yeah. Who Wasn't cares? it like a fighting game or some shit? It it's was a, a party, party game. It was a party game. We played it before. Don't you remember? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I did. I did. Yeah, come back. Fun. <laughs> because Red I, Hot Rumble tied, with the anime, <coughs> and it had, I had the anime suck. It tied with the anime and had some of the anime characters in it, like that kid with the yo-yos. He is fucking Captain terrible. Captain Blue's like a, illegitimate son or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, some like that. But um, and there was a DS title that no one remembers or cares about. But anyway, uh, that, it was like a series that at the time didn't get its due. I mean, it did, but not really. Um, because we never got a third game, like Jeff said. Uh, getting that but, at the end. 
That's another series that I recommend for people to check out. Hey, it's... at least Joe was in uh, Marvel's Capcom 3. Yep. Tasunoko. He'll probably make it into Infinite. You know, if speaking of Clover games that didn't get recognition, I could always bring up Okame. Because even now, I feel like that game still doesn't get the recognition. A lot of the people just didn't give it. Uh, I mean, I only know so many people who have ever actually played it. Have you guys yeah. ever actually played the game? Because, like... I never did. Like, no. Uh, people don't ever really like, go fully into it. Because that game's super long. Yeah. That game... That, that is like a 60... Believe it or not, it's like a 60 to 80 hour RPG, depending on how long you take. It's ridiculous. But yeah, Okami is definitely another one. Another one in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Thank you, Amaterasu. I hope you're an infinite. She won't be. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. And for my last game that I'm going to mention, um, now that I think about it, it's not. It, I don't know why I said the last ones were going to be PS2, because this isn't a PS2 game. It's a PS1 game. And it was also was a terrible and it was, graphic. And it was also an arcade game as well. One that I really enjoyed. Um... It's a little game by the name of Strider 2. Uh, oh, no, Strider. I thought you were going to say Rival Schools. No. Rival Schools, that's too easy. <laughs> I should. I think that was on the list at one time, but I forgot about that. Um, thank you for reminding me about that. Rival Schools, play Rival Schools, because I did mention it earlier. But anyway. More like Project um, And Project Justice. Project Justice is the one nobody played. <laughs> Rival Schools, everybody played. Project Justice is the one that nobody played, because it was a Dreamcast game. Anyway. Um, Strider 2. Uh, which is obvious. It was much different than the first Strider, which was just a generic uh, side scroller. Uh, depending on which version you played, if you played the NES one, it was weird. That that version's weird. And then there's a uh, there's the uh, the other Strider, the arcadey, the arcade Strider, uh, which is um, a side scroller where you just you go through different levels or missions, as they were called, and you just you know. It's literally like any platformer. You go through the level, get to the boss at the end, and that's it. But Strider 2 is more arcadey because it was like they were they were they were like these they were the hand drawn sprites, those sprites that you know everyone made a big deal about back in the day, Capcom sprites, um, which is I think the one that they used in Marvel vs. Capcom is in Strider 2. Uh, the one I think they directly ripped his sprite from. I don't Strider think 2. completely. Well, not completely. They changed because it looks things. way nicer. It does. It does look very nice. Strider two, Strider, weird. Strider two, Strider. Like that's the thing. Strider two is a fucking beautiful looking game. I love that game so much. It's and got it's a so, very distinct style, I will say. And, and it's very fast, very fast paced, and it's a really fun game. You get your um, ass kicked really easy too. It, yeah, it can be pretty hard, um, unless you fucking mash that fucking button, or if you have a turbo button where it just fucking. If you play the home version. If you if you just mash the fucking turbo button or just leave the turbo button down and he'll just swing the sword automatically like that shit's so much fun because it's like it's such a fluid game. You're running around a Strider and you have your cipher your cipher blade and you're just sitting just sitting there and fucking swinging it and it obviously makes that satisfying swing sound. Like that shit sounds really satisfying and like you're just running around destroying enemies with that thing and it's it's just it's a very fluid game. Everything just moves and works well together. And then when you get the upgrades and you fight all the all, like all the character like all the bosses and stuff like uh, the uh, the three sisters I forgot their names uh, the Chinese sisters doesn't matter they get their ass beat anyway and then what's his face bounty hunter dude that always dies um, but Strider Two is a fun a fun arcadey uh, platformer that I would recommend people to play if they what about the recent game. The new one that they came out with on PS3 and Xbox 360, yeah, uh, yeah, play that one too. That's a really good game. Like the, the this 2013 Strider, that's a fucking really good game that I would recommend people play because it's it's it changes things though. It's not as arcadey because now it's kind of like, and I don't really like using this term, but it's more Metroidvania where you have your or overworld and you just go wherever through the world. So you, it, there there are just obviously different areas. So like. There's Kazak, um, then there's like sewers and a bunch of other different areas that you go to, um, and obviously you have warp points and teleport points. I think that you can you can go back and forth, and there's hidden collectibles and uh, power ups and shit uh, placed throughout all the all over the world. So it, they changed that where it's a uh, supposed to just being an arcadey platformer where you go through levels and fight the boss. Now it's just this big world. 
that you travel through and look for shit like Metroid or Castlevania. Metroidvania. Um, play that one too. That's a good one. Play play all of them. Play Strider 1, 2, and 3. Even play the NES Strider that's kind of shitty. Play them all. They're all good games. I recommend them. And that's it. That's all I have. That's all I got. Barman 64, second attack. Let's go. No, play Strider. the first one over that one. Play a... Uh, uh, no. What was the... I don't... Awesome music. No. Awesome gameplay. Uh, it, I all right. Let me let me rephrase that. The music isn't bad. It's just you ruined it for me because you played it all the fucking time. I played one song. No, you played. Look, like, if there's three one songs. game that our listeners are gonna play, it's Super Mario Land 2: Six Golden Coins. That's a good game. That is like one of the best Game Boy games in existence. You know what else is a really good Game Boy game? Wario Land. Yeah, I was gonna say Wario. <laughs> Wario Land's really fucking good. The Warrior games were always pretty fun, actually. My sister had the one on GameCube. Uh, War, what the fuck was it? Just Wario World. Uh, yeah, that was actually. <clears throat> she um, she almost got all the boxes too. She was missing one. Yeah. She got really obsessive with that game. That was a fun time, though. I was actually surprised. Now look at good her. games. Not playing games. No, crazy. See, this is what happens when you stop yeah, playing games. Yeah, being a dental assistant. <laughs> when you stop playing games, you start living life, and nobody wants that. Nobody. But yeah, all those games we talked about, they're good games. Check them out. Try them out. Especially by time. They're, they're, wor they're worth the play. Clonoa, Strider, Rogue Galaxy, all these games I mentioned, they're worth, they're worth the play. You, you might get something out of it that you might not get out of most games, which is usually a, a good time. Hey, go well, out. You get a good, you get a good time out of any game. Actually, go out to the store. I mean, you know, find like a mom and pop video game shop. If you can find the game, pick it up. Support a local business. If you want to emulate it, emulate it. I don't give a fuck. Just play the game. You know. Play the game. Support. Well, not support it because you can't support them anymore because uh, almost used. every game. <laughs> but I every, want well, every. No, not, not just that, but every game we've mentioned in this list in this podcast, they're they're, they're dead. Just, I want the series is not gone any further. I mean, I mean some want, games that are digitally available. You can please buy. I want every listener to play Odin Sphere from start to finish. That's a good game to play. It's a long ass game. It but, is. You know what else they should play? Dragon's Crown and Muramasa. Play all of the Vanillaware games. Play all the Vanilla. Yeah, there's another just in general series of. There's a studio that doesn't get enough love with Vanillaware. They make some fucking great games with great art. I mean, there's, and there's, great food. there's still a and way the to, to support some of these games, like uh, the Sega games we're talking about. Buy a brand new copy of the Genesis Collection for PS3. Any Genesis Collection, really. Or the, the fucking the re-released uh, consoles they'd be releasing. Uh, Strider, you can buy on PS3 and 360, the new one. Freaking, uh, you, can also, you can also download Strider 2 as a PS1 classic. Good yeah. luck getting Legend of Lagaya. Legend of Gaia might be a little hard. Barman 64 actually came out on Wii U, if you want to do that. I actually bought it for Wii U. I'm hoping they bring <laughs> yeah, a second Wii one. Wii U. Uh, on dude. Wii U. Buy it on your Wii U. Grand Grandia, Grandia 2 actually released a like anniversary edition on Steam. I actually picked that one up. Grandia like, 2 like on we, PSN? Like we said before, yeah. Rogue Galaxy is on PS4. Mm -hmm. Get Rogue Galaxy on PS4. If Clonoa? Clonoa is another PS1 classic you can download. Not and, the PS2, or not the PS2 one. And if but. you have a if you have a Vita, you know, put that bitch on your Vita, play it on the go. Yep. You know? Yep. Yep. I mean, like this support where you can emulate when you can't. I mean, or just find a way. I don't fucking know. But like, it, some people just don't want to go outside and find a cartridge for Black Time, go outside and play it. I mean, there's plenty of ROM hacks out there where like you press like the L button and left or right, and it, it controls the sun levels for you. I mean, and that's how I play Black Time Three. So I mean, like, if I can do it, you can do it. You played three. Yeah, I played like half of it. Uh, I found like a ROM hack that was, was like it... partially like translated and it had like the uh, you can like manually put the sun levels in. That's crazy. Yeah, that's what a world. Good. What a world we live in. But this is years ago, like when I was still at my dad's place in Lakewood, New Jersey. Well, well, I'm in Lakewood, out. Washington. Throw so another out. another not well known game people could play is Sonic Three. Oh my god. <laughs> sure. Sure. Oh no, but god. seriously, play Sonic Three. It's. Really I mean. Sure, if you've never, I mean, if you just play it and act like you never played it before, then yeah, <laughs> there you go. Ooh wee, who's this yellow guy in Tails? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that. I know, I know Matt's never played Sonic 3. I, I can play as a red guy now? Oh, <laughs> his name is Knuckles and he doesn't chuckle. Oh my god. Wait, man, wait, why is his fist so huge and are those tumors? They're nipples. I can stick tumors. 
Jeff, why are you color. sharing? I see this picture you're sharing. I know those eyes. I recognize those eyes anywhere. Sorry, go on. Wait, what? On Facebook. <laughs> it's Hana from prison school. Oh, yeah, anyone should know what that is. When she's making that. So people that... should read prison school up until, like, volume 10. Yeah, play prison school. <laughs> play prison school. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a game. I mean, it is a game, if you think about it, actually. And just a, just a quick, just a quick, uh... A little quick thing I want to say. If you guys haven't noticed by yet, by now, fucking Fred's not here. There's a reason for that. This motherfucker is going hardcore in his competitive Paragon shit. And I wish him the best of luck and I hope he makes that cash money flow. But he's not here right now because he's practicing, I would imagine, or sleeping. One of the two. Because right now it's like 12, 16 a.m. fucking uh, Pacific time it's here. Three, in 3 a.m. for It's like 3 a.m. in his time. In his time. So yeah. he's either sleeping or he's Paragon and the fuck up. So, I mean, best of luck to him. You know, hopefully he does make that cash money playing Paragon. Every time I play with him, he does pretty good. I suck at the game, so you know he has his little team. I don't even friends. play it. I've I got a mountain. Either. I've got a Jeremy big old does, mountain of games. Jeremy before. doesn't like it. Jeff hasn't tried it. I like the game, but I'm not as dedicated to it as they are. And I'm, I'm just, just not in the mobas, like. Yeah. And with this, uh, yeah. with this competitive thing and me going to the field soon. I highly doubt I'll be any sort of asset to the team, so... Shit, it's like when I went to Worlds in uh, New York with Edison and them. Like, I fell asleep. Oh, that fucking league thing? Yeah, I was I was like, I just don't care. <laughs> like, but yeah, um, in case anyone was wondering, you know, Fred, he's doing that, so that's why he wasn't joining us today for that podcast. You know, sometimes we podcast and not all four of us are here. I mean, like, it's, it is it is what it is. We all live you lives. You sound all like different. someone's it, been it accusing happens. you of no, something. I'm not, no, I'm just saying. Like, it is what people, it is. People live lives. They're not always going to be there. Because I, I think wrong, we did though. a podcast without Jeremy once, and I'm not sure if we did one without Jeff once, but I'm pretty sure they're going to do one without me once, sooner or later. But E3. Know. What? We'll probably do an E3 one without Yeah, probably, because I'll be in the fucking field, you know, despite the fact that I'm broken. That's a, that's a big podcast you're missing out on. Yeah, it is, but you, you guys will get it done, and you guys will get all the views. Me, yeah, and I doubt it. But anyway, this is Matt, Jeff, Jeremy, you know, giving our thoughts on freaking... Games you should check out. Oh, games I wasn't joking about Comic Zone. More people should really play that. That game's fun. It'll kick your ass. Give it the it's... Sonic Media treatment. Bring it back with clean-ass sprites and sexy, fluent fucking animations. And bring... make the ending more depressing if you lose. Bring Theodore Roosevelt back. Yeah, bring him back. Yeah, bring him back. You know, we're bringing bring it all back. back. Well, I hope oh, you guys. Man, uh, he's like, I'm gonna rock this world. Yeah, when you get the game over. Oh, that's really depressing. So the whole game of Comic Zone just starts with a little strike of lightning, and then everything just goes crazy. I like how it's in New York, and that's such a generic thing, but it's great. I like how the guy's name is Sketch Turner. That's a good name. That's a good name, actually. <laughs> That's a really good name. It's like Get Tracy from Pokemon, because he draws. Anyway, guys, this is uh, Matt, Jojo, Jeff, and Jeremy. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, uh, you take our, any of our recommendations up and check out the fucking games. Play them now. Anyway, this is Turbo Slide DX. We out. Peace. Yeah.